And through our Lent season, every year, if you observe, we do a series, okay? Uh, we do a church campaign in every season of Lent. And this year, we're looking at a topic called expectation, right? Somebody shouted expectation, okay? <laughs> expectation is a study of, from the first chapter of Acts of Apostles, okay? First chapter, Acts of Apostles. Expectation, you know? When you think about expectation, you know, we all live with expectations, Right from the time you were born, you were raised up in expectation, right? When you were born, right, your parents raised you up with certain expectations of you, right? And as you were growing up, you set some expectations for yourself too, right? And as you grow on in life, you fall into a relationship, then you have expectations of a relationship. You get married, then you, expect, you have expectations. So in life, we cannot live without expectations. Expectations is part of our lives, okay? We cannot get away from that, right? Some expectations are good, some expectations are bad, right? But we all live through expectations, Okay, the dictionary suggests or tells us what an expectation is. Okay, expectation says the feeling that good things are going to happen in the future. A feeling or expecting some good things to happen in the future. Now, nobody expects bad things to happen. Anyone expects bad things to happen in your life? No one comes with that expectation, right? We all want good to happen in our lives. But... We all face situations that we don't want, right? That's the nature of life. That's the nature of the fallen world we live in. That's the nature of sin, right? We have situations that we have to deal with it, deal with which we don't like to do, right? But we always have an expectation that things would be better. Things would change around us. And expectation is a good thing. It's a good thing because the Bible talks about expectations too, right? There are some expectations from us for, with God. There are some expectations that God has for us. So we also have, Bible talks about expectation. And God has given his children a whole lot of promises, okay? And without expectation, we will never be able to receive the promises of God in our lives. So expectation is all about looking forward to a better, better thing to come to you, okay? In all in different situations, you expect something good to happen to us. The Bible calls us to live a life of expectation. You know, if you look at Acts chapter 1, that's our main theme for this series. Acts chapter 1 talks about Expectation, okay? Verse 1, it says, In my former book, Theophilus. Maybe some of you know who Theophilus was. Some of you don't know who Theophilus was. Right? Theophilus, right? The writer is the same writer who wrote what? Luke, right? The same writer. He's writing, he's already written a book called Luke. Now he's writing this book called Acts. And he's addressed this two books to this one person called Theophilus. Now in Luke, he actually mentions him as excellent Theophilus. So it gives us an understanding. Scholars say that he must be writing to a Roman general or a Roman governor, maybe. Someone who is in a high position. And he has been assigned the task of researching what Jesus has been doing and, to cor and report it correctly. So that was the job of Luke. And he began to research. In verse, verse 1 it says, In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all the things that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. And he goes on to list what he did after his suffering. He presented himself to him and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. 
For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus is talking to his disciples and is telling them, okay, the Father has promised something. In order for you to have that promise, he says, I want you to do a thing. And he goes on to say, I want you to stay in Jerusalem. Don't move out of Jerusalem. I want you to stay in Jerusalem until you receive what the Father has promised. But you know, some, like us, some of us, we always want to know when it's going to happen. That's our struggle, right? We always want to know when it's going to happen. So the same with the disciples, okay? The disciples, look at what the disciples say. Verse 6 says, Then they gathered around him and asked, asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Now look at these guys. They lived with Jesus, right? But still they didn't get the understanding the purpose of Jesus. Jesus did not come to establish a physical kingdom. He came to establish a spiritual kingdom. But these guys say, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And Jesus goes on to say, verse 7, he says, he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates. Come on. Times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The disciples wanted to know the date and time. That sounds like us. Date and time. That's how we live by. Date and time. It's very interesting to know that the Bible doesn't record the birth of Jesus, by the way. Doesn't put a date to it. Doesn't, you, can't, you don't see that in the Bible. December 25th. It doesn't record it. And it doesn't record when Jesus is going to come back again. He's not going to say, he's come back in 2035 or whatever. And don't go at me by what I said. <laughs> I just blurted out some here. But it always talks about waiting in expectation. In the Old Testament, you see, 700 years before Jesus came, they talked about him. And said, we don't know when it's going to happen, but we live with expectation. And we see that expectation, that promise of the Messiah has been fulfilled at the birth of Jesus. Now, Jesus, before going back again, he said, I'm going to come back again. And again, no time. No date, no year, no record. And he wants us to live as children who live in expectation. He says, it is not for you to know the dates and times, so don't struggle. Don't even go there. It is not for you to know the date, and, but often we try want to know the dates and times. And Jesus says, Hey guys, chill. Sometimes you won't know the date, sometimes you won't know the time. But I want you to live in expectancy. And that's what we're covering in our life group series. Living as people of expectancy. Children of promise. Okay? He says, the Father has promised. You are a children of promise and say, live in Expectation. So I want to tell you today, we got to be people who live in expectation. And the beautiful thing about expectation is, expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. Expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. And I believe, even as you go through this season of Lent, some of you are praying, some of you are fasting, some of you are believing, but lost ones to be said, whatever it is, I want you to know, as you Expect God to move, he's going to move. Because expectancy is the breeding ground for miracles. Right? And one of the things about expectancy is being patient. Being patient. Shout out, patient. And that's what we're going to cover today. As children, learning to live, expecting the promises of God, we got to learn to live with patience 
in our life. We know patience is not the greatest virtue that you'll ever find on the face of this earth. I know, right? We live in an instant gratification world. Instant noodles, right? Instant coffee. Come on, shout out some instant items that you, you are not having in our lives. Come on. Instant Maggie. What are some of the instant? Idli, what, sorry? Popcorn. Have you heard about instant loan? <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, you don't need a credit. They'll say, okay, within 10, sec- 10, th- 10 minutes, you'll get a loan. Right? Instant relief from pain. Is that possible? Instant relief from indigestion. Some of us probably need that. (laughs) Instant. Everywhere you see instant, instant, instant. And somehow, living in this world of instant, we carry that in our Christian walk too. The same thing. Just as we live in this world, instant, we want instant, instant, we carry the same thing in our walk with God. And we expect instant miracles. Instant miracle, instant relief from pain. Instant miracles, okay? Instant authority, spiritual authority. Right? Instant spiritual authority. Instant, you want to see instant success in ministry. Right? Instant results. Instant authority, instant spiritual maturity. We'll be mature just like that. And we expect instant things even in our walk with God. But the truth is, instant is not going to take you for long. You know, the beautiful explanation about that in the, in the live group series, I'm going to speak to you about it. You got to go watch it. About what it means to be patient, okay? Patience is a virtue. Someone said like this, possess it if you can, found seldom in women, never in a man. Never in a man. Patience, you know, think about patience. Patience is not a natural trait for us. Okay? It's not something natural that comes to us. Look at that. We all have parents here. And you have kids. Let's say the kids, kid has been three months old, five months old. And you know what happens when you have a kid of that size? In the middle of the night, at 3 (laughs) a.m., they chose to cry. Just to scream. And you already had a tiring day. You want to sleep. The baby is crying. So you go to the baby and say, hey, baby, it's 3 a.m. in the morning. You're not going to get any food now. You go back to sleep. You'll only get food in the morning. Try that. You know what's going to happen? Within the next 30 seconds, the baby's going to cry more. You know why? Because you are not born with patience. We cannot wait. We cannot wait. And some of us have never grown from that stage. (laughs) Right? We never grown from that stage. We want everything and now. Now. Act like babies sometimes. Now. God, I want it now. And the present trend is, if you can't have it, you want to know why. Now, growing up as kids, for us, we never had that opportunity to ask our parents why. If they say something, you sip, sip, that's it, you keep quiet, that's it. You can argue, you can ask them why. Nowadays, you know, when you ask your kid to do something, and you deny them something, they'll know, why should I do not do that? Why? Why? And then somehow we act like that somehow in our lives. Why? We want instant. Right now. But instant is not going to happen in our walk with Christ. Instant is not going to take us further. Instant will only take us to a place. But if you really have to move on in the things of God, you got to learn to be Patient. That's what expectancy is all about. Being patient. Being patient. 
So I want to highlight patience in our lives. I want to talk about patience today and help us understand what patience is all about. Okay? I may not be able to cover all the things, so if you want to know the whole points, you always have to go to the U version Bible app, all the notes are present, all the points are there. I might cover some today, but the rest you'll have to go learn it by, read it by yourself, okay? So let's talk about patience today, what the Bible talks about patience. Number one, patience requires waiting. Somebody shout out waiting. Eliminate hurry. That's what it means. Patience means eliminate hurry. Waiting is always a part of patience. Everybody has to wait. I don't like to wait. No, I used to wait in, for doctor's appointments. When my wife was pregnant. I know nowadays, sorry, nothing against doctors. But in order to get go into the chamber, you need to stay at least two hours outside. Yeah. Right? Waiting is part of our lives. So learn, learn to live with it. Don't complain about it. Waiting is part of our lives. You know, we need waiting. And sometimes we can't wait. And signs of impatience shows us. And shows us in different ways. You woke up late today and you wanted to get to church at 12. Before 12. And you know what happened? You were getting out, of the ro- getting out of your home quickly, rushing on the road, and somebody, the whole road is wide open, but this guy is going very slow. <laughs> that happened to me this morning. I said, guys, come on, man, move. I suddenly said, hey, be patient. Be patient. And sometimes it comes with anger, and sometimes you blurt out words. Which are not supposed to. But patience is about having a calmness inside of us, a peaceful spirit during the time of waiting. During the time of waiting. You know, the New Testament talks about patience. In the Dictionary, in the, if you look into the dictionary, you'll find two words for, that are being used in the Greek. Two words, one is called hypomono. Hypomono, the understanding of hypomono is, okay, to remain under or abide. The idea is to remain under or abide under difficult circumstances as when it is not possible to escape or avoid them. In other words, to persevere, not to give up, okay, that's, another, that's one way. Another word that is used in the Bible is the word called macrothumio. Macros means long, and thumos means wrath or fierceness. Now, the understanding is being tempered. That's the idea. Fierceness means temper. So you see, in the Bible, you see these words. In some translations, it's translated as patient. In some translations, you'll find another word called long Suffering. Long suffering. That's another word for patience. That was, that was macrothumius is all about. Long suffering. And you see these words appear in the Bible. Patient, long suffering. And that's what patient is all about. Long suffering. Right? There are so many ways God wants us to be patient in our lives. And that sometimes is suffering. Painful in one sense. Okay, Jesus told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem. Now imagine how difficult it would be much for Peter. Now you know Peter, right? You know, if you know Peter, he's a guy who always jumps up. <laughs> right? He always jumps up. Jesus walking on the way, he said, Lord, I want to come to you first. Okay? Someone came to uh, arrest Jesus. Peter was the one who jumped up with a knife. You always see this kind of guy, Peter. Imagine Peter for him to stay calm. Jesus said, stay in Jerusalem. Don't do anything until you receive the promise of the Father. Stay in Jerusalem. And Peter had learned to be patient as they expect 
the promise of God in their lives. You mean, they've done ministry earlier. Imagine that. Peter did ministry earlier. Jesus sent them two by twos, right? So when they went, they did some amazing miracles. Imagine Peter could have said, hey guys, Jesus has gone up now. Okay, he's given us this great commission. What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? Let's go. Let's start. He could have jumped. But this all stayed in expectancy, waiting for the promise of the Father to be fulfilled. Unfortunately, many of us aren't patient enough to wait on God. We are not patient enough to wait on God. And we find making decisions and living out plans and isolated from God. And when you live out plans, make plans isolated from God, you get into Ishmael. Shout out Ishmael. Now who is Ishmael? Who is Ishmael? You know, the story goes on. Abraham and Sarah have no kids. And God tells them, okay, I'm going to bless you with a kid at the age of 75, by the way. This is, you're going to be blessed with kids, okay? The time goes by. First year, nothing happens. Second year, nothing happens. Third year, nothing happens. Now, it's like our Indian parents, you know, nothing wrong. Sorry, parents don't get me wrong. You know, once your child is married and it's two, three years time, and the next, the whole talk is all about when are you going to get kids? When are you going to get kids? So Abraham and Sarah were going through that phase in their lives. God told them that they're going to have a child, but they never, they're not seeing the fulfillment of it. Three, five, nothing happened. So Sarah thinks about it. You know, God promised us a son. So why don't you do this, Abraham? Why don't you go sleep with my maidservant, Hagar? I'll go and give her as a wife. Right? So have a, have a child with her. So Abraham obeys Sarah, which was not a good thing to do, right? And they pop up a boy called Ishmael. Ishmael was not the promised one. God said Sarah would have a child, not Hagar. But instead of waiting, Abraham and Sarah they wanted to jump the gun. Right? They wanted to jump. They wanted to help God. That's what you and I do sometimes. We help God. Lord, I know this promise is there. Can I help you, God? Looks like it's getting delayed. Can I help you, God? That's what Abraham and Sarah did. They helped God. And they produced an Ishmael. And once Ishmael was born, there was no peace in the family. There was strife. Hagar and Sarah fought. Okay? Hagar began to look down upon Sarah because she couldn't get a child. Strife came into that family. And that's what happens in our lives when you don't learn to wait on the promise of God and when you learn to help God, when you try to help God, you're going to produce Ishmael's. Ishmael is not God's best. It was not God's best. Isaac was the promised one. Ishmael was not. And so often in our times, we fail to wait and wait on God. We try to help God and produce an Ishmael, which is not God's best for you and me. So I want to encourage you, stop helping God. Turn to your neighbor and say, stop helping God. And so many times we try to do that in our lives. We try to help God. God says, no, I don't need your help. I don't need your help. I know when to bring that promise into your life. So hang in there. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Do you trust God enough to wait on his timing? Wait on his timing. You know, we don't like to wait on timing at all. Nowadays, you know. We want to get rich quickly. We want to have sex before marriage. When God all the time say, wait. We want to push the boundary. Jerusalem, no, a little bit more. 
But God says, stay in Jerusalem. If God tells you, stay in Jerusalem, if God tells you, hang on, you hang on. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Patience is all about waiting for God to act. You know, I want God to act. That's why we don't run. We got to eliminate hurry. Because we want to be in a hurry. God says, hey, wait. Wait. Wait in expectancy. Wait in expectancy. You know, patient comes in our lives only when it is tested. Only when it is tested. You know, you don't have to patience. You don't need patience for something that you already have. That's what Romans talks about. Romans 8.24 says, For in this hope we are saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, and he says, we wait for it patiently. Patiently. Patience. Being patient will be a struggle. But don't be discouraged. Because in patience, in being patient, you grow. Pa waiting is not wasted. Waiting is not wasted. Romans 8.24 says, in the message Bible says, that is why waiting does not diminish us. It does not diminish us any more than waiting diminishes a pregnant mother. You can't pop out a baby just like that. You've got to have given nine months to pop out a baby. And says when waiting, as the mother is waiting, does not mean that it's wasted. It's not wasted time. Okay? It's not wasted time. It says, does not diminish her in any way. And it's, instead it says, we are enlarged in the waiting. We, of course, don't see what is enlarging us. But the longer we wait, look at this, the longer we wait, the larger we become. Woo. The longer we wait, the larger we become, and the more joyful our expectancy. That is God's method for us, my friends. Patience. The willingness to wait. The willingness to wait for God's timing. The willingness to wait for God's way. The willingness to wait for God's plan. The willingness to wait for God's purpose. To come in our lives. Listen to this. The greater the blessing God has in store for us, the greater the patience God requires from us. The bigger the blessing, the more fulfilling the blessing, the more awesome is the blessing. It means the more time we have to wait. The waiting will not last forever, by the way. God is not cruel. But we wait till God shows up. So the question is, do you trust Jesus enough to follow him? Do you trust in his timing? Waiting can be a holy practice that you can do through this season of Lent and the rest of your life too. Started with this season of Lent. Learn that habit. A practice. Waiting. Waiting. Number two. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit. No. We cannot live by life without patience. And we, we are not born with it. It's not a gift of the Holy Spirit. But the Bible says... Galatians 5.22 says, But the Holy Spirit is the one who produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience. The, the reason that these qualities referred as fruit is because they cannot be grown instantly. Fruit takes time to grow. And the same way, patience takes time to grow. It takes time. Unless with the, without the help of the Holy Spirit, we will never be able to grow in patience because it's not there naturally for us. So that's why we need the Holy Spirit. He is the one. You walk with the Spirit. He is the one who will help you in that season of waiting. If you trust God, if you ask the Spirit of God to help you, He said, He will grow in patience. He'll give you the strength to go through that. It's a it's a. Fruit of the Holy Spirit. Patience is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So when you exhibit patience, you are growing in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Number three, patience brings influence. 
Proverbs 25, 15 says, through patience, a ruler can be persuaded. One of the benefits of patience is that it can do what no amount of pressure or strategy can accomplish. When we don't see things changing in the way that we want in our lives, we are tempted to make a change. We are tempted to lash out. We are tempted to force the issue. Sometimes the situation that we face are really, really hard. We make our case for change, but it falls on deaf ears. But here's the truth, my friends. Patiently waiting. Even in the midst of difficult circumstances, it has the potential to make your voice heard at the right time. You might not see it, nobody might listen to it, but you be patient and keep talking about it. Not in an angry way, not in a frustrated way, but you give it time, say, God, help me. It says, at a due time, it says, it has the power to persuade a ruler. It can cause influence in your life. Number four, patience remains steadfast during suffering. James chapter 5, verse 10, 11, so talks about a great example. It says, brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. So look at the example of Job. He was patient under trial, patient under hardship. He didn't know when his suffering was going to end. He didn't know. God didn't give him a timeline. But God had set a timeline for that. The moment Job realized that he had to be patiently waiting on God. And when he learned that, God began to change. And he says, look at the example of Job, who was patient under trial. Was his trial just? Was his suffering just? No. He didn't do anything wrong. It's, it was a discussion between God and the devil. And they caused the whole thing. And Job was collateral damage. But in through that, some of us are like collateral damage. Huh? In a workplace, it's like that sometimes. You're caught up between this guy and that person. But look at Job, he said. Yes, he messed up, he complained, he grumbled against God. Why is God doing this? Everything he did. But at the end of the day, he had to come to a place and say, God, I surrender myself to you. I'm going to wait for you to help me out in this situation. Steadfast, he never left his faith. Patience will always help you to stay in faith. Stay strong. The next thing, patience yields God's promises. Hebrews 6, 11 says, we want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end, so that when you, what you hope for may be fully realized. We not, do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. You see, my friends, all the promises of God are yes. We've been hearing this, okay? You need to have faith. You need to have faith to see the fulfillment of the promises of God. But nobody talks about patience. Because the Bible clearly says, through faith and patience. Faith and patience. You want to see the promises of God fulfilled? You got to learn to be patient too. Faith is not the element. Yes, faith is required. But at the same time, faith and patience. Together. You know, if you look into the farm, you cannot hurry up a harvest, right? So you put the seeds today and tomorrow it will not give you a harvest. No, right? That's how some, of, some people do over here, right? Coming is the season of mangoes. The first batch of mangoes was never, will always never be sweet. Why? Because they hurried up the process. They hurried up. They said, okay, we can't wait. wait. We want to get money. Let's push the mangoes out. We want before they are ripened. There you do artificial methods to ripen them, and that's why you don't get sweet mangoes. But if the mangoes are put on the tree for a good enough time, 
still be very sweet. The end will always be sweet, my friends. Even though you might not see, but the, always the promises of God will be fulfilled. You know, someone said like this, you cannot get a chicken by breaking an egg. You get a chicken by hatching an egg. Two different things. Two different things. You cannot get a chicken by breaking an egg. You got to wait. Hatch it. Brood over it. Sit on it. That's when the chicken's going to come. God says, my promises will come. Don't be in a hurry. Don't break the egg. Don't break the egg. Hatch it. Hatch it. God is not late. As people think, he's late. Bible says he's not late. The next one, final. Patience is the quality of love. Five minutes, I'm going to close. Patience is the quality of love. First Corinthians 13 verse 4 says like this, love is patient. If you are to grow into the next level of love, <laughs> patience is the means to it. Patience is the means to it. Especially in marriages. You know, my wife is technically challenged. She was the first one to get an iPhone in our family. And sometimes she doesn't know what to do with certain things on the iPhone. And she keeps on asking me, how do you do this? Or this? And sometimes I get impatient. I get impatient so many times with my wife. How many times should I tell you? You can learn it. Come on, grow up. But the Bible says love is patient. And I'm not patient sometimes in my life. I need to grow in that too. Love is patient. And you, husband and wife, come on. You want to grow in your love? You got to be patient. Your spouse is going to do things that you don't like. They are not perfect and you are not perfect too. None of us are perfect. But love is the one that will overcome that. In your relationship, love. Love, it says. Patience. Love is patient. When you learn to love like that, you will grow in your love. Be patient. So I want to challenge each one of us. I don't know what your challenge situation is. We got to learn to be patient. Willingness to wait. But God's timing, willingness to wait the way that God wants to do. Willingness to wait to see all His promises fulfilling. It's going to happen, my friends. All it takes is a little bit of waiting. All it takes, a little bit of faith. All it takes, a little bit of patience. All it takes, is a little bit of love. And you will grow in it. Steadily. Slowly, steadily. And when you are fully grown, you will see the promise of God fulfilling your life. Close your eyes. Okay. You know, one last thing I want to talk about. You know, why God is asking us to be patient? Because He is patient with us. He's not asking you something which is, He is not. He is patient. He is patient with all of us. Now I want to read the scripture even as you close your eyes. Listen to the scripture. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 8 9 says, Do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God is waiting on some of us to come to repentance. Maybe you never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He's being patient with you so that you can come to repentance. You always wanted to live your life the way you wanted to. You didn't follow the ways of God. You lived out a sinful life and God says today, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I'm being patient so that you will not perish. I haven't called for the end of the world so that you can be saved. I'm not calling out fire from him because you can be saved. So I'm being patient. So if there is anybody in this congregation who will say, 
God, I see your patience and I want to answer that call today. If you never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, I just want you to lift up your hands and say, God, today will be the day I will receive you. I'm not going to wait anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else before we pray today? He's being patient with you. He's asking you to come to repentance, come to his knowledge of salvation. He wants to save you from destruction and darkness. Right, anyone else? And everybody's lifted up their hands. I want to lead you in a prayer and a hope at, at Hope Unlimited at Church. We believe in the family praying together. Come on, church, let's pray. This prayer along with everybody who's receiving Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Come on, let's pray this. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for me on the cross of Calvary. Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner and I ask you to forgive all my sins and cleanse me with your precious blood. Jesus, I believe in you with all my heart and confess you with my mouth. You are Lord. Come live inside of me by the power of your Holy Spirit. And I also want to give a call for the rest of us today too. You've been struggling with patience, being patient. You lack it. You missed it many times. But today I want to pray with you. The grace of God will continue to strengthen us even as we be patient in the things of God. So if that's you, I want you to stand up. Even as the team sings for us. If that's you, just keep standing up and just lift up your hands and say, God, here I am waiting in you. Waiting for you today. Come on. Come on, lift your hands and say, God, I'm waiting. I'm waiting on you, God. In my waiting, I'm looking to you. I'm waiting on you, God. It's God. Sign of surrender. Lifted high in prayer, and it's you we adore, singing high. Yes, God. even as we stand today we ask for your forgiveness of God so many times in our lives we jumped Lord we did it in our own way instead of waiting on you we tried to help you God and we messed up our lives oh God so God here we are sorry sorry oh God for what we have done but give us the grace Lord to be waiting expectantly oh God Waiting patiently, O oh God, to see your promises full in our God. So I pray in our waiting, give us the strength, Holy Spirit, because we can't do it in our own way. So we need you, Holy Spirit. We need your strength. We need your courage. So I pray, God, for everybody who's struggling with that. I pray they will have a fresh encounter with your Holy Spirit because it's your Holy Spirit that will help us to be patient. So Holy Spirit, would you touch us afresh? Touch us afresh today, O oh God. Fill us afresh today, O oh God. Give us the grace to be patient in your promises, O oh God. And we know, God, when we grow in patience, we will see the fulfillment of it, O oh God. So thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you, Lord, for that today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.